Hi, Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. I'm with my uh, partner, Liz Trotter. Hey, Liz, how are you? Howdy. Who's I'm your good. partner? And who's that partner over your shoulder? That's Olivia. Olivia. Well, that's a pretty Olivia. name. Olivia. Yeah, she'll she'll pop her head up and she'll jump down at least once or twice, probably. Knock something over? <sighs> yeah. And she has to go outside and go out of my office. And then she paused the door until I let her back in again. So, yeah, she loves it up there. Well, it's uh, a Monday. So we had the opportunity to make it through another weekend. I hope that uh, you guys were able to uh, shut it down for a little bit and get some rest, refocus, and think about something other than you know, when's my PPP money going to get here? Or is there any more paperwork I need to fill out? What more do I need to be doing to uh, get ready for, you know, paid sick leave or the paid family medical leave act? What's the acronym for that, Liz? Um, F, uh, F R R. Oh, now I forgot. Now F R R. Uh, family. Families first, FF, families first, RCA, FFRCA. What does that stand for? Um, oh, yeah, families first response coronavirus something, A. Oh. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Pay family medical uh, Actually, I think it is it's FFCRA, yeah. Yeah, CRA, Families First Coronavirus Response Act. So we're going to, um, I guess, have time to take questions and, 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 and talk about, about all of that. But before we start, I just want to kind of revisit what we did uh, Friday. We had a... Real quick, uh, real quick. I'm going to just interrupt real quick. Sarah... I know that you're asking about the PPP got approved coming in. That is what we're going to talk about today. Just in a little bit. Um, so don't worry. We, we are going to get to that. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, we're here, we're here all week. <laughs> <laughs> um, Friday was one of the, you know, at least in, in, in my opinion, one of the best uh, Facebook lives we've, we, we've done since we've been doing the uh, coronavirus smart business moves. We had uh, Sharon Grammer, who uh, has a, a company called um, Benacore. They do uh, biohazard recovery work, which uh, means they could be cleaning up meth labs. They could be doing up crime scenes. They could be uh, doing anything where there is a biological risk to the cleaning technician, as well as, you know, other people in, 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 in the space. Um, she shared, I don't want to say everything. I mean, there's a whole lot to learn, but she shared a ton of stuff last Friday that anybody who is interested about doing that type of work should take an hour and, and, and listen to, to her perspective on it. Or if you're out there uh, just thinking about, getting a fogger or, you know, getting some of this equipment and getting out there and, 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 and doing some of this type of work. I think that you, you want to listen to what, what Sharon has to say. Um, she shared things like uh, what the insurance requirements are. If you're doing that type of work, you need to uh, basically talk to your insurance company and they have a different scopes code and you're going to be paying a, a different workers comp rate for doing that type of work than what you would be your your traditional uh, maid service. A much higher rate. Oh yeah, very much higher rate. Very much higher. Um, she talked about you know all the PPP they need to wear. She talked about training. She told us where to get the training. And actually the uh, association that does the training for that, that, that she's used, I put a link to their website in our Cleaning Business Today resources page. So we'll look at that at the end. and. If you want to know more about, about them, you can, can, can certainly go there and look at that. She told us what uh, she charges for her service and how she charges for her service. She told us about how she pays her people. I mean, it's a pretty good place to start if you're interested in, in, in doing any of this type of work. She was very generous with, 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 with giving us the real skinny. 
And um, we asked a question, you know, a 2,000 square foot home, three bed, two bath, how, what would you charge to, to clean that if, uh, you know, the scope of work was, hey, we had somebody living here that, that has coronavirus, we want you to uh, make it safe for, for other people to go back in. And she did some uh, back of the envelope math and was thinking about it and came up with a number, it was over $4,500. Tom, I have to, I have to um, clarify though. If you remember, I asked her, is that only for level three? And she said, no, that would be the price, level one, two, or three. Yeah, because that would be, she would basically treat it like it was hot and at the highest level. Yeah, yeah. And Liz and I, after the call, we're, we're chatting a little bit. And, you know, we know, you know, people that are doing some of that type of work. And I mean, we, you know, you know, it's hard, you know, anytime you're, 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 you're charging anything in the high hundreds, we think that we're charging a lot of money and we're just doing main service. Right. And we're kind of, you know, there's all we need. There's a reset on the bill rate for that. But then again, I mean, she's got training, she's got the credentials, she's got all yeah. the equipment. I mean, she's, she's playing, she's playing a different, a different game at a different level. Yeah, that, that's totally true. Uh, so people are constantly asking, you know, what's the pricing on this stuff? And, you know, how, how do you determine the pricing? I, and Sharon didn't say if she was top end, top dollar or not. She didn't give us that info. We know. I mean, she would have told us. We just didn't think to ask. Um, but I got the impression that she was sort of on the higher end, but not the highest um, end either. And I. I know when people are talking about, oh, I've got a fogger. How much do people charge for this? <laughs> I'm like, you know, that that's a really a tough, tough question. Well, it's a tough question, but it's a tough answer, too. Well, Just, you, know. you know, the take the takeaway that I got from that, though, is part of it is having the equipment, but part of it is having the the pedigree, the references, the, the training and everything that goes along. Yeah, with that. yeah I, I'm not going to be able to start advertising that I am can can do this type of work. I can fog your house for $4,500. I, I don't have, nobody's going to hire me. But when Sharon says that she's going to charge $4,500 to clean your house and tells you why, people are hiring her. There's so yeah. many people that she's so busy she can't do all the work right but um so i, I think it's again uh, somebody this is somebody else's term not mine um but he said that in in this space we are like the trunk slammers of our space you know we we're not getting all of the correct certifications we don't have all of the correct we we just don't have all the stuff and we don't have the knowledge we don't know what we're doing but we're out there with our foggers and our gloves and our masks. And we're like, we're ready. <laughs> we can do it the same as anybody else. And yeah, and, you know, I, I'm sure that to we're the bane of, of the professional's existence in some ways, but I'm sure that in some ways they also look at us like, yeah, not really my competition. <laughs> go ahead with your little fogger, go, go do your little thing. But so it's, it's tough. Oh, and Sarah. Oh, Heather's Heather. Yeah, congrats to, to Sarah. Uh, she got her PPP money. I know it's quite a few people now. Sharon, you're sharing with us one of her recent clients. You, you want to frame up for everybody, like, the type of client she's working for and the, the important work that she's doing? Are you talking about the, the power oh, company? Okay. Yeah, yeah, go for it. You, you frame it up. But it, she was amazing. <laughs> it was. The, it the, was. The utility company in St. Louis hired her. They had a, a COVID-19 breakout. And it was, she's doing everything from like the, the, the power, the, the trucks that the linemen drive to actually going inside the control room where they're turning all the knobs and levers it got me thinking, and we started watching um, Chernobyl last night. The I don't know if you've seen that. I remember it. Yeah, and um, 
we asked her, you know, these aren't nuclear power plants. And she didn't answer one way or another. I don't know. There may be some proprietary stuff there, but I guess you, you need to be careful where you're spraying your, 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 your stuff. But anyway, um, she's keeping the lights burning in St. Louis. And um, it's just, just, incredible in, in, incredible stuff that, uh, at, that they're doing out there she mentioned the counterindications so that are so key ppl who don't have any idea are out there using their foggers etc yeah she totally talked about you know people not knowing what they're doing and going out there and um one thing that i noticed about sharon too is she talked a lot about safety you know you can tell that it was a really big deal for her that everyone is going to be safe and nobody is going to have any any kind of um there isn't going to be any uh, what's the word i'm looking for any accidents nobody's going to get yeah. get a, a, an infection or get sick Nothing. because they weren't following the right protocol no. yeah they they wear like three pairs of gloves and two tieback suits yes Two Tyvek suits. I mean, to me, that that was amazing. I've never heard of anybody wearing two Tyvek suits and two pairs of booties. So shoe uh, covers. Yeah, shoe covers. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So she. Yeah, they're very. And also, um, I like how uh, she was talking about how they all go in. She doesn't like to split up her people. She likes to keep them all in because they work so well together. It's like a real well-oiled machine and how, you know, different people have different jobs and that's what they do every single time and they can count on each other. So it was, I, it was really interesting to listen to. Uh, what's Heather say over here? I'm working on educating myself with regards to fogging. I'm not doing anything with it till I feel secure. I will mark it for disinfecting and cleaning. I have worked on educating myself and team since this all began. Yeah. Definitely a lot of education needed and uh, a lot of, uh, and I guess like in Sharon's uh, case, she does have uh, what you call the pedigree, Tom. You know, she mm -hmm. has the training. She spent the money. She's put in the time also. And she's not 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 just COVID-19, right? She's been cleaning up um, what she mentioned, some meth, meth labs and uh, crime scenes, and she's she's been doing a lot of other stuff. So to her, this is one more dangerous thing, but I got the impression that it wasn't more dangerous in her world because the the protection and the precautions that they take. In yeah. her world, it's just as dangerous as anything else that she's doing, which I really, I really liked. The way she explained it, you know, there's like, three levels of hazard but she approaches every job like it's the highest level so it really doesn't matter when she's getting into her two tyvek suits with the three pairs of gloves and the respirators and all of that stuff it's game on and you know it's kind of like superman putting on his cape i guess it's you know it's yeah. all dangerous but you know she's she's okay with it because because she knows what she's doing yeah, and I, you could, uh, I think that the, the level of seriousness that was around it uh, made a really big difference, or makes a really big difference. It made a big impact on me. Um, multiple times she would mention just small things like somebody's getting overheated and they don't want to have to have to stop because it's such a huge process to to take off their PPEs and then to have to put them back on again. And then if they're going to take a break, she wants them to take a minimum of a half hour of a break because they're going to be going through this whole big process. She wants them to be well again. So I, I thought that was really interesting too. And, and then what did she say that they take? Electrolytes. Yeah, electrolytes. Gives them a little more. A yeah, little more electrolytes, I think you just said too. Yeah, Heather. Yeah, me too, Heather. Like, she was amazing, right? When we, you know, actually, after we finished the live, Tom and I were almost like giddy schoolgirls. Like, oh, she was amazing. What the heck? <laughs> Did you know she was so amazing? <laughs> we're like, well, kind of. But, gosh, this is, that was really a great call. And 
like you said, a lot of it was safety. And we were asking about fogging and, you know, there's people out there with like the N95 respirators and she was kind of, she wasn't impressed with that in terms of the proper level of pr protection if you're going to be fogging a disinfectant. No. I, and that's another thing, Tom. I'm glad you said that. Um, that that was another aspect of it is people are going in with fogging and she's protecting her people not only from the COVID-19 threat, but also from the threat of the disinfectant and the chemical that they're using. So I think that's maybe an, um, an under looked at thing. People are going in and they think, okay, everybody's out of this house and I'm going to fog it and I'm going to make it safe. But are you really protecting your people from what they're doing? Even if this house was empty, this building was um, has been empty for 14 days and nobody's been in there. Maybe the threat is not COVID-19, but the product that you're actually using. She um, she mentioned a couple of different products, and I can't even remember what she said about them now. One of them she thought wasn't wasn't as good as the other, though. And she was glad to find that out. So even mm -hmm. at her stage, still learning. Oh, sorry. I'm not even keeping up there. So I guess bottom line takeaway, if you if you missed Friday, I mean, we do these every day. And some of them, if you missed it, hey, you're probably okay just watching, you know, the next one. And, you know, it's, it's as things change. A lot of stuff that we've done in the past isn't worth going back and watching, quite frankly, because everything we were talking about has completely changed. Sharon's uh, discussion on Friday though is, is, is well worth the uh, watch. If you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to go back and do that. Yeah. Um, do we have, uh, like, I see some, 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 some folks chiming in here. Um, did I see uh, Sarah says she's got her PPP money. Yeah. Okay. She's the only one that has said that so far. Actually, she didn't say she had her money. She said she's supposed to get it this week. I'm pretty sure. Let me go back and look. You know, um, I guess that's been been happening. We've we've heard from from several people that they're in the process and talking with the bank and have closings set up and are expecting uh, disbursements here sometime in the uh, in, in in the short term. Um, Exciting stuff. I um, have a friend, not in the cleaning business. He uh, owns an electrical contracting firm up in Northern Virginia. Send me a letter that, that, that came from his bank. And he's gotten approval and he's going to be getting his money later this week. And the letter said that, you know, it's optional, completely up to him. But they highly advise all of their their, their clients who are getting these PPP funds to set up a separate banking account and put those funds into that account and disperse those funds out of that account for the things that are approved to be used with that money. If your objective is to try to get as much of that as you can uh, forgiven and treated like a, uh, a a grant. And the note went on to say that they don't have a lot of details, but, but they have good reason to believe that the documentation process is going to be onerous, is the term that they used, very onerous with the IRS to have those funds treated as grant monies. So I don't know exactly what that means but that's interesting information to have and kind of made me take pause because i'm thinking well i can keep up with the money i just do it in quick books and don't need to go to all that trouble and i'm not recommending what we do at the moment i don't know enough to say one way or another but that was what one bank was 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 recommending to a business owner that, that i know well, I would recommend it. I'm nobody. <laughs> I'm just your friend. So as your friend, yeah, heck yeah. Get a separate account. Why not? What's it going to hurt you? Right? Um, keeping it separate is just going to make it easier no matter what. If you're really a, like a CPA yourself and you are on top of your finances and you feel confident that you can keep all that stuff straight, okay, great. Maybe not. 
but everybody else, everybody I know, <laughs> y'all need a separate account. Um, Sarah's got a lot of questions here. Um, so she's saying she's confused on what to do now. She doesn't know if she can get her February employment, February was, uh, or get up to her February employment. February's record high for us for revenue and employment. Um, uh, oh, Bridget's getting a separate account. Good job, Bridget. Can I pay my working employees a bonus? Sarah, we're going to deal with all these all kind of at once. I'm going to read them all real quick. Is there a time period on using the PPP money? I know we need to be full operation eight weeks, but does that mean the money needs to be used within eight weeks? Oop, that's a little bit off. That's not quite right, Denise. We'll, we'll clear that up a little bit. And Sarah, do I just make up a lot of busy work for everyone? Can I put my husband on the payroll? All right, so first let's clear up the, the one that Denise has on here real quick, Tom, if that's okay. okay. Sure. Um, so Denise, you have to use your um, PPP money within it. No, sorry. Okay. So you're going to get your PPP money and any monies that you use from the time you're funded for the next eight weeks, that's where the eight weeks is coming in. Those monies will be, what's the word, Tom? Forgiven. Right. Yeah, they'll be, treated, they'll be treated as a grant, provided you meet all the criteria necessary to qualify for that. Yeah, which is why I keep the separate account. All and right, it, I, I, it, I, there's only one thing piece. either. It's 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 prorated if you hit certain numbers, and it's all driven off of getting back to full employment. So in the, the so that the thing that you're talking about with June thirtieth, that's that's when you have to be fully operational by June thirtieth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's been explained to to me from from, yeah. from source I think is good is that June thirtieth date is is kind of arbitrary. It's it's yeah. really for that just that eight week period you need to get okay. back up to full employment. Okay, so yeah, I have different information. Uh, the information that I've gotten from my CPA is, and I don't know where you've gotten yours. So again, we have different information. So you guys need to do your own research on this, right? And make sure that you know what, what, you're, what, what you're doing. So the information I got, what I read was that you have to be fully up to staff by June 30th to be able to get that money, all of that money um, uh, forgiven. And if, if you're not by June 30th, this is just what I heard. If you're not fully up to staffing levels by June 30th, then it will be, um, 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 what's the word? It turns into, well, it's going to be prorated. Yeah, prorated. Thank you. It'll be prorated for however much that you, you did get. In the, um, monies you're, in the monies you're talking about being turned into a grant are the monies you spent during that eight week period for yeah. payroll and some of the other allowed operating expenses. Rent, yeah, yeah. There's a few other things there, so, but only for those things. If you don't, if you're not, you know, if you're not hiring your people back, you're not spending the money. So even if you get back to a point where you qualify for those monies being turned into the grant, it's only the monies you spent. So if you didn't spend very much of it, you still have a chunk of money that's going to be treated as a loan. Right. So, Which is why people want to spend as much of that as they can, as long as it's, there's some type of value, right. To somebody. Which yeah? gets into the question. I think one of the questions here, you know, do I, make up a lot of busy work for everyone. That's a, a, a interesting strategy. And I don't, you know, it's, it's a risky strategy. If you've got, if you're just paying people and you're not producing any revenue, then if that gets you to the point where you qualify for like a hundred percent grant and all of that, you don't have to pay back. That's great. But, this whole onerous process that you might have to go through to prove to the IRS that you met their requirements. If you 
don't meet those requirements because of who knows what, because quite frankly, the reason we don't know is the rules haven't clearly been defined yet. Yeah. They There's, said two more weeks until those are even defined. So, so we're guessing to some yeah. degree. Um, so if you're wrong and it doesn't turn into a grant, then you spend a whole lot of money that you're going to be expected to pay back that you never really got a lot of value out of. So I'm um, going to another question that Sarah had, can I put my husband on the payroll? So one of the things that looks pretty clear is that you don't have to have the exact same people. You just have to have the same level of, of labor. So I, I don't know. There is nothing written right now about whether or not you can put your family on the payroll or if you can just put any random people on the payroll. I don't know. Um, the way it's written currently is just so um, low level that it doesn't say you can. Looks like you could. But what if it in two weeks when they have much better parameters, there's something along the lines of somebody who would normally be working in this profession or, you know, somebody who has worked in this field before or has a legitimate, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like that, that again is kind of risky. So if you have a high tolerance for risk, maybe if you don't, maybe not. And I think part of, these questions you're asking, we're all asking. I'm asking, Liz, you're asking. We're yeah. trying to figure yeah. it out. If it makes good business sense, you really have nothing to lose. I mean, there's legally no reason why you can't put your husband on the payroll. But now, yeah. is that money going to be treated as a grant or not? I don't know. I mean, they're not going to lock anybody up for that. You can put anybody you want on payroll. Yeah. You might not be able to have those monies treated as a grant but you know if your husband is doing something productive that's great and you know even if he isn't if he's your husband and those monies are going to your you know your, your family benefit in some form or fashion i guess that's not the end of the world either yeah so and my husband is on my payroll so i would feel fine like cranking up his hours a little bit <laughs> Hey, yeah. you're not working at your other job? Come on, you're working more here. Um, Linda, I have the same understanding that you have, Linda Caveso says. Um, her comment is, sounds the same as mine. I, and my, I have my kids do, do various things for me, and they're typically on my payroll. And, you know, I laid them off a month ago and said, you're still going to continue to do work for me, but you're not going to get paid for it. But I'm not sure you should be saying this on live Facebook. Is that even legal? <laughs> they're, I guess since they're your kids, maybe. They're my kids. It's fine. They can do that. Um, that is a good point, though. But anyway, um, we might start paying them again once our PPP money gets here. Yeah. Um, I, I think that since they've been on the payroll before, Tom, in my, this is just me, of course, I know nothing, <laughs> but I would think that that would be looked at favorably. These are, these are employees that have been employees in the past and you brought them back. Yes, they also happen to be related, but you didn't bring them back and give them money just to, I'm worried about this idea of um, taking advantage of the system. Uh, there's so much upset from the way things were handled last you know, time we had a big bailout and that, you know, so many people took advantage of the system and large companies and what they did that I think that there might be a little bit more focus there this time. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Yeah. Hey, Tom, you see what um, Heather says over here? They must be employees for 30 days, correct? I haven't heard that. Have you heard that? I haven't. I haven't heard that either, Heather. If you have um, anything that would show um, where you heard that, where you saw that, especially something in writing that came from somebody, that'd be awesome if you could share it. That'd, that'd be super helpful. There's there's a lot of a lot of interesting scenarios here because we're going to have people who 
aren't going to be able to come back to work because they've got kids and they don't have school now. In most cases, a lot of cases, I don't know, school open, public school open anywhere. Uh, Not that I've heard of. Yeah. Um, most daycares. <laughs> She really wants down now. If I saw what, what Heather, you know, asked, and then all I can see is your cat. Um, you know, daycare. So we're going to have people who aren't going to be able to come back to work. They're going to be looking for the paid family medical leave at the FFP, whatever. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so... That's through no fault of ours, but so do those hours count towards, you know, your, your PPP numbers? Cause they really aren't working, but they can't work because they got to take care of their kids and they're doing the paid family medical leave thing. By the way, you get, a, you, you have, you pay them for that, but then you get the tax credit. So you get that money back every quarter. We did, we did ask the question and we got clarification that you can't double dip on that. You don't get PPP dollars for that plus the tax credits, how that's right. adjudicated. They're still trying to figure out exactly how all that's going to work. And which is why I think that that is going to be some just nightmarish reporting. Yeah. How all that stuff's going to be reported. But when you, when you get down into, to, to that level, then you start trying to figure out, okay, I need to get back to full head count, but I might have, you know, a, a material number of my people who are doing the paid family medical leave act thing to get back to full employment. I got to replace them and they don't have to be the same people. I mean, we've seen that multiple places. Yeah. Well, I can hire new people, but you know, they're starting off day one. So yeah. how, how does that work? I did want to reference another question that somebody asked earlier. And I think it might've been Sarah about bonusing people. Um, so I know that I, I from, from my company, I've been looking at some ways to potentially, like, what is the smart way to potentially bonus some people? Because uh, I, I do see that if I'm going to have more people back here working and they, you know, I'm, I'm kind of competing with unemployment <laughs> in mm -hmm. some ways. So I, I'm looking at how um, I, might, I might do that. Go ahead, Tom. And if you look at the weekly pay, you're losing. Yeah, of course. So, but I mean, there there's other pieces that they're also going to have jobs, right? When uh, they're they're talking about thirty percent unemployment potentially, and uh, at the at the when this all sort of blows over to the le the beginning stages, at least uh, at least those people would still have jobs. So. Maybe they're not making quite as much money, but I would, I, I am looking at how I can take advantage of the PPP money, at least for those eight weeks, and be very clear that this additional money would be for this eight week period. And just just deciding how to structure that, how, how should that bonus, right now what I'm looking at is a bonus that is on top of some guaranteed pay maybe, so if you work maybe 35 to 40 hours, you'll get bonus this amount of money, you know, maybe $500. If you work, you know, 25 to 30 hours, you're going to get bonus 300. If you've gone, you know, something like that. That's what I'm looking at currently. Not, yeah. not to say anybody else should do that. I haven't decided on that. It's like, that's just what I'm thinking about right now. And, and break that out as a separate number so all your employees understand that that is a special you know a, a special temporary thing that's that's going on and it doesn't get lost and you know and i would actually not even say that i'm giving it to them i would say that it's money that the government is providing so that so that it doesn't come back on me when i have to take it away <laughs> you know that's the government everyone's like giving it to me what, Tom? Yeah, hey, I like that. The government's not giving me that money anymore. Yeah, that is done. And so being really clear about where it is and listing it on the, you know, on the on the pay stub of what this money is for and where it came from, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
Here's the um, here's the good news for that though. If those payroll dollars are going to pay people who are generating revenue, who are making money for you, yeah. even at the end of the process, if you find out that you don't qualify at a hundred percent, the odds of qualifying at some percent that's going to be enough yeah. to at least make up for that premium is going to be yeah. there. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It's got to be able to make up for that. So, uh, let's see. Um, Nina had mentioned something. She said only to get the COVID-19 pay. And I think, I'm not exactly sure what she means by COVID-19 pay, but I think she's talking about, actually, I, I don't know what she's talking about. Um, if you could clarify what you mean there, Nina, I think you were specifically talking about um, the employees needing to be working with you for 30 days. Are you talking about for the um, federal unemployment money, the $600 a week, maybe? I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe clarify that for us. We went past it kind of quick and I missed it. Um, <laughs> Nina, the government gets to audit our businesses. Yeah. That's yeah. nothing new. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. been going on for a while. Uh, she says the 30-day number. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure what you mean by the 30-day number, Nina. Maybe type out a little bit more there. Um, Sarah says, that's what I wanted to do since we still have revenue coming and PPP. It seems like I could do that, but I want to make sure. Yeah, right now, unfortunately, Sarah, there's not a for sure option for a lot of this stuff just because everything hasn't hasn't been solidified, hasn't even been written yet. So uh, all, all we can do is kind of, you know, our, our best guess and best odds, uh, what are the things that are gonna help you the most? And keeping in mind that if you make a mistake, you have the protection of the masses that Tom always says, which I really appreciate. Um, they're not expecting that everybody is going to get all of this right. So you're not going to jail, You're not going. it's not gonna be a terrible thing that's going to happen to you. Uh, you may end up having to, who knows, maybe get some, give some money back at, some interest rate or something, but it's not going to be highly punitive because that's exactly what they're trying to get away from. And and then don't forget that we do have that extra money that whatever we don't use, it, if, if you don't use all that money, that money doesn't have to be uh, paid back for two years at 1%. I, again, you can always give it back whenever you want to. You can give it back right after the eight weeks if you want. So. It, it still seems like good. Which is really an awesome deal. If the government just said, hey, you want to borrow two and a half months worth of payroll with a two-year AM at 1% interest, we'd all just jump on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't read anything about this, and I don't know how this is going to be handled two years from now. But two years from now, when these notes become due – what are they going to, I mean, it's like, Hey, I need to typically banks will oftentimes give us, will loan money with like a, a balloon payment at the end with the idea that you're going to have to refinance it. Like most uh, commercial real estate loans or maybe are a 20 year am amortization. So you're paying it off like it's a 20 year note. But it, it comes due in five years. So basically, there's this last payment is really, really big. But the understanding is that you're not going to have that money. So they're just going to re refinance it for another five years. And what's the government going to do if you don't have the money? It's a question that, that we need to think about a little bit because it's not secured by anything. You're not personally guaranteeing it by anything. I imagine they're going to be very amenable to do whatever you know, they'll work with you. Five bucks a month. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah they're gonna, they're, I can't imagine that they're not. Right, the no. I, sorry, but, but I just, it just struck me because what are they going to do? Put you out of business? You're going to fire everybody. That's the whole point of them doing this to begin yeah. with. Right? Yeah. So, it, I mean, it just feels like bottom line is as long as you're going, this is my thinking, not you. As long as I'm, going out there and I'm actually using the monies in the spirit in which they're being provided, I think I'm gonna be okay. 
And the spirit that they're being provided is keep people working, keep as many people working as you can and keep, keep business flowing, keep money flowing. So I, I think as long as I'm doing that, I'm going to be okay. I won't, I'm not necessarily thinking I'm going to make bank and I'm going to be amazing. You know, it's not going to be maybe the best thing I've ever done in my life, but I'm going to be okay. And hopefully a little bit better than that is my plan. I'm going to, I'm going to put some thought into it and be a little bit better than that. Hey Tom, maybe you can help me. I'm struggling here with the Nina thing. I don't know what she means by COVID-19 pay. Do you? She says um, to be eligible for the COVID-19 pay, you have to work for 30 days. I um, don't know what COVID-19 um, pay is, Nina. There are so many different types of monies going out right now for COVID-19. It's hard to know what you're talking about there. Sorry. I know I'm making you keep writing this over and over again. And uh, Sarah wants to know if I can wait to start paying out the PPP until I understand it more, or do I need to start using it this week? So here's one piece of good information that I have here. So I have good and bad. All right, so the bad news is as soon as the money is funded to your account, then you have eight weeks from that day. Now, I do know somebody that requested that their money not be funded, they were given a week. So they asked to have it pushed out one week. I don't know if some you could get it pushed out more than that. I don't know if all banks will do that, but I do know somebody that got it pushed out one week. He said, you know, he wasn't open right now. Uh, they have a stay, um, whatever, some, some sort of a, I'm not sure which type of order he has where he lives, but, um, they can't, they, he can't work right now. And so he asked if the money could get pushed out a week. And he was given, he was given that week. So um, if, if Sarah, in your case, if you want to try and gain a little bit more time, you might ask for that. I know you, you said your monies were going to be funded on Wednesday. Get a hold of them before that. No, you know, today or tomorrow, I would think. Mm -hmm. Um Nina, are you asking about, she says here pay is two thirds or a hundred percent when you're out of work as an employee, depending upon reason. Are you talking about unemployment, unemployment. benefits? Oh yeah, that's the only thing I can think of is unemployment benefits. Yeah, that's the only thing that I know of that has the two thirds thing is unemployment. And for someone to qualify for unemployment, they have to work for a period of time and I think that varies from state to state. And I don't know if it's number of days. I mean, that may be one criteria, but the, a, a certain number of hours work that I think is, is, is another criteria, but I don't think that's, and I just got a hard no, so. Well, Starlene Kirkland says it's under the CARE Act. And I'm thinking she means the CARES Act. Um, that employees need to work for your company for 30 days before they qualify for the CARES Act. So maybe that's what Nina's talking about, anything under the CARES Act. There's also the COVID-19 pay, I thought. Unemployment was just if they were furloughed, right? All right, so, um, so I've never heard of COVID-19 pay, and Tom hasn't either, specifically, not, nothing with that name. Oh, okay, so Nina's happy. She's like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. She's talking about the CARES Act. All right, and that, that act is C-A-R-E-S. It actually is an acronym, even though it doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's just care, um, like they care for us, but it actually is C-A-R-E-S. Um, let's see. Okay, <laughs> look how happy Nina is. Yes, finally. Hey. <laughs> Somebody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah. Rebecca says, I was hoping once I heard if I was approved that I could hold signing the papers until I saw some hope that the economy was returning. Doesn't look like it works that way. Um, but uh, give it a shot, Rebecca, and see. Um, okay. I've had two different people told me that the bank gave them up to 10 days to close from when it was approved. Nice. So they could set... A closing date and I know one person actually did that he set it out 10 days from the day that it was was approved nice okay 
So and I know somebody that pushed it out and then got another seven day push. So I don't know. Ask. Can't hurt to ask. All right. I, don't know, I don't know if that's standard or if I, different banks do it differently, too. I mean, this I don't is, either. Yeah, I don't either. But absolutely ask. Ask for everything that, that you can <laughs> possibly, you know, think to ask for. What's the worst that's going to happen? Absolutely. And don't take no for an answer at the first pass either. Well, how about this? What could we do it another way? Because a lot of times, you know, you can get something more than nothing if you ask a few different ways. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So it looks like um, uh, we got the the problem of the six hundred dollars taking care of the CARES Act uh, money. So the federal the federal six hundred dollars a week for unemployment. So yes, for that it sounds like you have to have worked thirty days. Interesting. So even if you qualified for state unemployment, if you weren't there 30 days, you wouldn't get the extra $600. Well, and can you qualify for unemployment if you haven't worked for 30 days? State unemployment? It depends. That varies from state to state on how many hours they worked. Oh, probably. Um, probably. I mean, it would probably be, it would probably be hard to do that actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, d I don't know of a state that you can do that. I haven't heard of one that you can, but I haven't talked to people in all the states. So I, I definitely do not know. I've asked, oh, that no. question, I've asked that question more than once, once over the years, and the answer always comes back to me in terms of hours worked rather than days. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it probably, whatever the hours worked are, probably would, would exceed 30 days. So... Yeah, and we have a day. We have a day limit here. Um, so Linda says her bank is okay with holding off the signing. That's excellent. Did they give you a time frame, Linda? How long you can hold off? Well, curious to hear about that. Yeah. Also curious if anybody has gotten any EIDL funds. I've heard one person that has gotten EIDL monies got the $10,000 um, advance. Advance, which is supposed to be treated as a, would, an advance that you don't have to pay back. Yeah, supposed to be, right? But they changed the language, so it's a little bit iffy there. Initially, it was a grant, then they changed it to an advance on the loan that's supposed to turn into one. So, wow. At Linda's bank, um, they told her she didn't have to do it until she needed it. That's amazing. That that's amazing. Yeah. Although I wonder how that's going to play in. So, Tom, with your new information about June 30th, does that mean it's a non-issue then? Well, that was why was the 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 ruling. Uh, the days are blurring, but that was from last week. That was like Thursday, maybe Friday at the at the at the latest. And that was coming from some people who had been approved and was going through this whole. Yeah. Process. It was like, well, you know, they were trying to figure out even they're going to take the money or not, and when do I have to pay it? You know, yeah. What's the criteria? And and, and one of the things that, 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 that both of them them said was the story was that the June thirtieth date was 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 kind of arbitrary. It was really about what happens for the eight weeks when from the day they they take the money. Yeah. So the um, Susan's asking, did that person actually get 10,000? Yes, they did. But I also know somebody that did not get the whole uh, 10,000. And I can't remember how much she said she got. It was on a, um, it was reported on by a county official um, on a call and that it was, um, they got significantly less. The number that popped into my head was $1,450, but I wouldn't swear to that. So it was up to $10,000. But uh, the person I know that did get the, the advance was 10, they did get the full 10 grand. And the county official had something to do with it? A what? You, you mentioned a county official? 
Yeah, so we were on a on a call and um, the mayor was on the call and there was a whole bunch of different county officials um, on on this call and they were sharing different things about how the different programs work and in the, the different counties around around me. And one of the county officials, and I, I can't remember who it was, said that she knew of somebody personally that had gotten um, EIDL funds, but at a much lower degree. And that I, I thought the number was 1450, but you know, like I said, I wouldn't swear to that number. Um, but then they started talking about how not, not everybody's getting $10,000. It, it was initially thought that everybody would be getting that $10,000 grant, but that's not at all how it is. And even if you have like 25, 30, 40, 50 employees, you still can't guarantee that you'll be getting that $10,000 grant. So, um, because those monies are gone. I'm not grant, I'm sorry, advance, <laughs> turning into a grant. That we were led to believe that we don't have to pay back. Yeah. But and that we all sort of heard we're going to be manna from heaven, that we would all have within three days of having the conversation. <laughs> Woo! By Thursday, we're going to have 10 grand, every single one of us. Um, I did hear of somebody that also got their stimulus check. That makes anybody happy, the $1,200. Um, and her family got uh, $2,400. So, I mean, on the one hand, I'm sad that they don't make over $100,000. But on the other hand, yay, I'm glad they got $2,400. So, yay, good for them. So I know those monies are for sure coming too. But the got crying on that. It's good, it's good to hear that somebody's getting it. That's a good sign. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have a direct deposit account set up with the IRS, it's going to be a while longer because they're going to have to mail the check. And they said quite a bit longer. Uh, when we were looking at the calendar, remember that one calendar? Mm -hmm. uh, they were talking like 10 weeks. So a lot longer and there's a I think TurboTax has like a portal if you can plug in some some direct deposit information the IRS is supposed to be coming out with a portal that you can do that too I've seen a couple of different um, congressmen say that within the within the next week and that was late last week but i i haven't heard any details about that that if you don't if you want to get your money sooner you can go to an irs website and plug in uh, a bank account that they can direct deposit in that's good news no so that people don't have to wait so long i love that the other the other important date that i saw is um April 18th that the federal unemployment monies, the $600 a week, are supposed to begin being dispersed. So that's that's just the end of this week here. So that's supposed to be happening. That's good. Good to know. Uh, anybody else have anything going on? Um, curious what anybody else is doing. Anybody's plans for uh, what they're going to have their people doing for those eight weeks. If you are uh, not own, open and you can't get your money pushed back, like Linda can, lucky Linda, we need to go to her bank. Uh, but if you can't get your money pushed back, what are you going to be doing? How are you going to um, uh, be employing your people to do what? What will they be doing? I've heard a lot of, of different strategies. I'm just curious if anybody out here in Facebook world has any ideas of what they're going to be doing. But I think the big thing that most people are talking about is training, online training which is, you know, you can't do training in person with the six, the six foot rule. That's going to be a little bit tricky, but especially if you have a stay at home order. 
so there's there's um, Elena, who is uh, also an attorney. She says she's going to hire her family. So Sarah, I think that you were asking about hiring your husband. Um, maybe maybe talk to Elena. She's going to hire her family, so um, she has less concern about hiring family than some people do, for sure. And um, if there's a problem, I can still defend you. Can I say it again, Tom? And if there's a problem, Elena can defend you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, she's going to love you for that one, Tom. Uh, so Mary says she knows some people in Minnesota that got their $600 federal money. Yay. Okay, good. So if you're in Minnesota, you're getting it sooner. We're not getting it until the end of the week here in Washington. Uh, let's see. Danit says, no on topic. Can you respond to the two-day presentation? And it, Oh, I'm so sorry. And if it'll be recorded and available for employees who will be working at that time. So, Tom, would you like to speak to that the um, education on Wednesday and Thursday a little bit? Yes, it will be recorded. And, I mean, it'll... I guess it lives in Facebook world for forever, I guess, but we're going to also put it on YouTube and, and, and make it available. That being said, um, we we're trying to encourage as many people as, as, as possible to be on the live version because we will be taking questions and want to be able to kind of have the same, dynamic as as what we have on these calls so you know having a number of people on on on, on those facebook lives will make it a richer better product for, for for everybody but yeah it'll it'll you can go back and catch it later if if uh more important things like uh making some money during that time is is is, is an option i would certainly uh encourage that and it is free and it will be on YouTube. Did you tell them about the, um, or maybe um, put the link, Tom, to the, I think a lot of people don't know about the modern cleaning page. Yeah. And why a, that might be valuable. We, we decided to stream it to two different pages. I guess some of the feedback that we got about streaming it to the Cleaning Business Today page is there's concerns that, there's a whole lot of information on the Cleaning Business uh, Today page uh, about, you know, hey, this is how you can start and run a profitable cleaning business, which is yeah. kind of our purpose, I guess. But um, what at a different place that, that, that all of our employees could could, could log in or, or, or just go to and visit and, and hang out. And Modern Cleaning, I guess, is a business that uh, we've had for 20 years now, I guess. And it's kind of evolved over, over the years, but we did a lot of work over the years in terms of the science of cleaning. And there's a lot of nerdy type blog posts on, you know, science of cleaning type stuff. But, and there's a store there, you can buy some stuff if you want to, but there's nothing there that's going to, there's nothing there that, that anybody would have any concerns about their employees saying, it's not going to, motivate anybody to go out and start their own cleaning business. Um, let's see, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, great, thank you, we'll do our best. Let's see, you need, if you hire family, you need to pay them through payroll, correct? Absolutely, Susan. That one I don't have to ask about, <laughs> that one for sure. That's a softball. Yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, Linda says, will you still get a certificate if you watch later versus live? Uh, yes, we're going to have a quiz that will be an online quiz that the link will be available after, after, after the program. And really, we're going to be doing it on an honor system. We're going to be asking people to, to, to assert that they participated and watched the entire program. And if so, you can go ahead and take the quiz. And if you successfully answer the questions. Uh, I'm not even sure how we're going to score. I mean, I know, I know how we're going to score it, but I don't know exactly how many questions are even going to be on it. We're still developing all of that. But if you pass the quiz, then you get your certificate of completion. And 
I fully expect that everybody who takes the quiz will pass it. There you go. That answers your question, Denise. Um, yes, happy to answer your question, Sarah. Do you have any more? Do you feel like we helped you out um, with everything that you needed? And then Susan says, what is the name of the program and will it be on this group page? Yes, it will be on this group page. And is there a name of this program, Tom? Yeah. There is a name. I can't remember what it was, but yes, there is a name, Susan. It's real catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> I'm not remembering a lot of anything at the moment. Let me see if I can. Tom will pull it up for us and and then we'll know. Whoa, bang. You'll do this. Oh, and Tom, after you're done with that, you should probably share the CBT link. Just realized it's already 305. Okay. So here is the modern cleaning Facebook page, and it's just Facebook forward slash modern cleaning. Um, what house cleaning professionals need to know in a COVID-19 world. And it's That's two the part. name of it. You guys see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. So you click here and it explains a little bit what it's about. And, you know, we're not, this certainly isn't comprehensive and doesn't cover everything that a, you know, a house cleaning professional would need to know in order to be a house cleaning professional. So we are assuming that the people who, you know, are participating in this, that their primary job responsibility is cleaning homes. And we also assume they understand the basics of, you know, safety and cleaning products and tools and equipment, because we're not going to be, you know, we're not going to go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to assume that, you know, these are people who have experienced cleaning homes every day, but we're going to get into, you know, the specific safety issues and procedural issues and things you need to know issues in order to responsibly clean homes now that, you know, we have to deal with COVID-19. We are not going to be getting into all of the work that we were talking about, Sharon Grammer and what his business, her business does. If you want to learn that, there are other resources for for that. Um, like I said, so that's kind of what it is and what we're doing. And one's going to be Wednesday at four o'clock, and the second part's going to be Thursday at four o'clock, and those times are Eastern. And if you want to, I guess the the thinking is. You can get it at either Modern Cleaning, Facebook forward slash Modern Cleaning or Facebook forward slash Cleaning Business Today. And I suspect most of the people on this call are in Cleaning Business Today. That's perfectly great. You can get it either place. For those who said they don't want to send their cleaning technicians or cleaning professionals to Cleaning Business Today, then Modern Cleaning is an option because we're not uh, encouraging anybody to run a cleaning business on modern cleaning. We're just talking about nerdy cleaning stuff. Stuff that they're not going to want to look at <laughs> if it's not for this event. <laughs> cleaning All right. Business. So we're going to go to cleaning business today. Um, this is where you subscribe to get our newsletter. And if I go to coronavirus downloads, this is the secret page that we are dropping all of the resources that we talk about. And we added after yesterday's call, a link to the association that Sharon is a member of to get special training if you want to do bio recovery work, clean up meth labs and do COVID-19 cleaning and, you know, clean up murder scenes and whatnot. All and right. Yay. Okay. Good job, Tom. And uh, looks like we are pretty much done here today. Then Tom, yep, three oh nine. So and we'll be we'll be back tomorrow, and Wednesday and Thursday. Rather than starting at five, we're going to start an hour early at four and go for an hour and a half each day. 
So, and that's going to be, you know, just the, the, the COVID-19 training for, for, for cleaning professionals. So we'll, it's almost like a weekend. We'll have to give uh, this discussion a couple of days. When we come back Friday, think of all the stuff that will have happened. <laughs> that we'll have to talk about. One more real quick thing, you guys, for anybody that's new to these uh, Facebook Lives here, Tom showed you the that page on Cleaning Business Today, the link of resources, go there um, and and maybe start at the bottom of the list and, and work your way up instead of vice versa because some things changed um, since we put things in. Um, but I... The stuff that's in there is pretty, pretty amazing. You, it's information you definitely want to have if you don't already. Alrighty, you guys are welcome. Good to see okay. you, Mary. Always good to see you, Bridget. Talk to y'all later. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you tomorrow at five. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.